Hello and uh, welcome to my class on tomography, or at least the mathematical methods of tomography. I am uh, Dr. Joel Rosenfeld and uh, I'm happy to have you. So, uh, yeah, this is a, a special topics course that I'm teaching uh, at the University of South Florida. Um, my, uh, and so this is a, a 6,000 level uh, graduate course that we pitched at um, sort of a broad audience. So um, we sent this uh, across uh, multiple departments, um, you know, in physics, uh, you know, um, sent some emails to Moffitt and, uh, and a bunch of other places uh, to try to see if we can collect a bunch of people in here and, uh, and, and have a, uh, a class that really focuses on the mathematical methods behind tomography. Um, so, uh, you know, this includes, uh, broadly speaking, uh, things like um, the Fourier transform, Fourier series, uh, sampling theorems uh, related to that. Um, of course, the the radon transform uh, it w is uh, extremely important, and um, and yeah, uh, we will look at like back propagation, um, construction of images from a whole collection of slices, uh, and etc. Um, which will use uh, a combination of say the inverse Fourier transform and radon transform, etc. And since this is a special topics class, um, there's going to be a good deal of me and inserted in here. And so this is going to take a look at some of my own projects that have been related to tomography um, and the use of kernel methods, which are the um, sort of the core of my research area. Um, so I, I have done some work on uh, tomography that, relate, that relates to uh, dynamical systems. And so uh, things like uh, motion tomography and, um, and, and, and then also uh, using the same techniques you can even uh, do uh, regular tomography uh, or image reconstruction. And so, um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll cover a bit of that as well. Um, there's also algebraic methods and uh, Katzmark method. I always forget his name. Um, I'll put it around here somewhere. And I guess, uh, so yeah. Um, so that's what this class is generally gonna be about. And, um, and so it's a, it's a nice blend between uh, pure mathematics and harmonic analysis, signal processing, and, uh, and medical applications, as well as applications to engineering and, and et cetera. And so, um, so, I, I'm, uh, so I, I think it'll be a, a good amount of fun uh, going through this class and, uh, and for me, learning some of the topics along with you guys. Um, I know uh, most of the basics, uh, but I've never really had the opportunity to really delve into a lot of the deeper ideas. And so, um, so I, I'm excited to learn with you. So, uh, what else can we talk about then? Um, yeah, so I have on here that um, my little notepad uh, that I should probably introduce myself uh, just to give you an idea of what my background is and, and sort of the approach I take to this. Let me adjust this camera. My neck is just way too lit up here. Uh, eh, let's get rid of this. Anyway, uh, so. Uh, what is my own background? Um, so I got my PhD uh, doing pure mathematics uh, back in uh, 2013 uh, at the University of Florida, which is just around the corner uh, from us uh, here at the University of South Florida, uh, about two hours away. Um, so I, my own uh, experience was in just studying operator theory and kernels uh, related to certain operators. So. Um, like uh, we, I worked over the Fox space, the the Hardy space, the um, I made up a space, uh, the poly logarithmic Hardy space. If anybody ever really cares to look into it, um, but the uh, but when I graduated, um, I found that the uh, job market was pretty rough. Um, basically, everybody who um, uh, there, let's put that back on. There, I feel more comfortable being evenly lit, even if it is a little uneven. Anyway, um, so I, so I, I was aiming for a job in mathematics. I wanted a, a research position, uh, not a teaching position, because grad school for mathematicians is like 90% teaching. And so uh, I was looking for a way to just get a whole lot of research done. And um, it turns out there's very few of those uh, positions available to mathematicians uh, uh, as postdocs. So at least in, in the mathematics. And so I, um, I applied to a bunch of positions and uh, I didn't get any of them. So uh, in a panic, um, I decided I needed to teach myself control theory. 
And so I went and um, and uh, knocked on the door of uh, of a control theorist at the University of South, uh, the University of Florida, and um, I didn't realize how big of a deal he was. Um, but uh, he was uh, he is rather famous in, in control theory and nonlinear controls in particular. Uh, within 15 minutes of talking to me, uh, he made me a, a job offer uh, because I because uh, apparently he had been confronting a paper on kernel methods and um, and uh, he didn't know anything about it. So um, he talked to a senior graduate student, uh, Rishikesh Kamal Prokar, who is a coll big collaborator of mine now. Uh, and um, and Rishi said, "Bring him in." So. So yeah, uh, so I worked there for uh, four years, I think, um, and and then uh, after I finished uh, working there, I moved on to another postdoc at uh, Vanderbilt University um, underneath uh, Taylor T. Johnson, and uh, and there I worked on um, uh, problems in uh, uh, like reachability analysis and and whatnot, and it's really where I had the beginnings of a lot of the ideas that led to uh, my own work in tomography. Um, so, uh, so now, um, I joined the faculty of the University of South Florida about a year ago. I uh, actually, technically it might've been like a year ago, like last week. And, um, and yeah, I, I've been working here since and, uh, and it's been, uh, a really productive time for me. So my, my own interest in tomography, uh, sort of branches out of engineering. Um, the first... A uh, place I ever really confronted it, uh, tomography was uh, when my colleague Rushi, uh, he came up to me and he asked me if I, uh, if you could um, determine uh, a function just from a whole bunch of uh, sums along uh, different uh, um, different lines, and uh, and I had no idea about the radon transform at the time, and I had no idea about um, you know anything to do with uh, tomography. And so, uh, so I said, well, you need a lot of cross sections if you're going to get it. And um, and then I, I started thinking about the problem. Uh, ultimately, I never really got the chance to work on it because the the person who asked the question graduated and went into industry, and uh, and his advisor had no further uh, interest in the problem. So uh, so yeah, if anybody wants to work on tom uh, tomography and hot wire measurements and uh, fluid flows or anything, that'd be pretty cool to do. Um, but I guess so. Then uh, I went on to uh, to think about this problem for a while, and um, and then I uh, bumped into a bunch of people who were working on um, different problems in operator theory, and um, and I tried to convince them to try to do uh, uh, try to apply those uh, um, operators to uh, tomography uh, because uh, I, I thought it fit very well. Um, Anyway, so this led to a, a winding path that got me to uh, develop these things that we call uh, occupation kernels, which are really uh, these um, sort of um, uh, functions that live in Hilbert spaces that represent integration um, when you take an inner product against them. And, um, and using these, uh, we uh, were able to uh, make some advances in what is called motion tomography. And that's where you have a whole bunch of little gliders that you put into some, uh, you know, giant body of water, and uh, and you basically send them out, and uh, and they can keep a bearing, and they have a particular motor on them that you know maintains a, a, a you know constant speed, and uh, using basic physics, you can make a, a guess at where it should end up, uh, and uh, and then when you have it pop back up out of the water, because uh, they're underwater vehicles or autonomous vehicles. Uh, then you see where it is. Now the difference between where it is and, and where you expected it to be uh, can sort of be seen as a sort of tomographic representation of, uh, of the fluid flow that it, it went through. Um, and so, uh, so then there uh, you do your best to both reconstruct the, uh, the trajectory itself and also the um, uh, the dynamics of the the body of water that it was in and so um, there's some examples where people have done this uh, before I certainly didn't come up with a problem uh, this was um, Fuman Zhang uh, out of uh, Georgia Tech uh, Dr. Fuman Zhang and um, and then uh, his graduate student who led the project was Don Sik Cheng who is now uh, a postdoc uh, I think in Massachusetts something anyway uh, now I'm working with uh, um, uh, Dr. Cheng 
uh, and uh, and we're, we'll soon have a paper out uh, on this topic. Um, so yeah, I, and that's that's more or less where I, I came into all this. Um, and so uh, all of my methods I used for motion tomography can certainly be applied uh, to regular uh, tomography and uh, reconstruction of images. And, um, and so uh, I'll show that to you guys uh, after we go over the more fundamental concepts uh, in the beginning of this class. In any case, um, yeah. I, so I consulting my notes here, uh, saying what else should talk. You know, usually in a lecture, I can just sort of like pause and and just look at it and take a breather and drink some water, and um, and then and then look back at the class and you know like it, it breaks up the time a little bit and uh, I can just sort of you know sit there and and look smart and like I'm contemplative. Uh, when you do that on a YouTube video. Um, it, people get impatient, and uh, and so you have to cut that. So it, it makes uh, puts a lot more content in, in the in the time frame. So then uh, the question is, uh, what is this class going to really uh, talk about? So uh, the big things that we're going to look at in the very beginning is going to be mostly related to medical imaging because tomography, while it's uh, general purpose uh, and can be used in tons of different fields. Um, it is primarily its primary application is uh, going to be in computer tomography or CAT scans, uh, compu com computed axial tomography. I'll have to double check the ac acronym, uh, and then also in MRI technology. So um, it's a, uh, and so we should definitely uh, uh, address uh, both of those topics to the extent possible. Uh, the I, the textbook I have required the textbook I have required for this class uh, is the the mathematics of medical imaging uh, it's actually a rather fundamental book this is uh, by Timothy Feeman uh, and I think he's somewhere in Pennsylvania uh, let me see uh, so let's see where is he uh, he is in Villanova uh, Pennsylvania and um, and yeah I think this is he was at Villanova University or something Anyway, uh, but I developed this uh, this textbook. Uh, it is technically an undergraduate textbook, um, and and that benefits you guys because not all of you are really coming from uh, mathematics, so I can't really assume that you guys have measure theory or um, you know analysis uh, backgrounds. And so this kind of gives you a tomography from for somebody who's had say as much as calculus three, calculus two, uh, things like that, maybe a touch of linear algebra. Uh, but I don't want to uh, just restrict ourselves to only this book, uh, because it is kind of uh, basic. I mean, you don't need me if you're a graduate student in mathematics or even physics, uh, and uh, and you know, taking this class, you can just read this book and be done with it. Uh, but it does give us uh, a nice springboard to jump off on. So if you look through the uh, the chapters here, um, like the big ones that I'm going to care about would be like the chapter on X-rays and the radon transform, uh, back projection. Uh, the Fourier transform and the, the central slice theorems, um, and then uh, you know basically I think we can get through this whole book in about half a semester, so it's fairly straightforward and it gives us a nice place to start. But we want to fill in some things too. Um, there's another book that I picked up, and that is this one. Uh, it is uh, the Radon Transform in Some of Its Applications. This book was actually written back in 1984 uh, by Stanley Deans, who happens to be a faculty member at this university. Uh, so he's a, an emeritus professor of physics in, um, in the, at the University of South Florida. Um, and uh, what's really nice is I was really hunting for a tomography book uh, that really covers the Fourier transform to the depth that I really wanted to. I'm a mathematician and I'm rather partial to the Fourier transform. It is sort of fundamental of uh, uh, transform of uh, functional analysis. And so I was looking for something that covered what are called rapidly decreasing functions. And so this is uh, what is called the Schwartz space. Um, he doesn't call it Schwartz space, he calls it the space of rapidly decreasing functions, and that's fine. Um, and so, uh, so we're going to follow him uh, when we get to the Fourier transform and talk a lot about that, and then we'll fill in with other resources. Uh, there's another book that I I'm going to be pulling from, and I'll, I'll put it here vaguely. I don't have a hard copy for it, um, and so I, uh, and that one I uh, covers CT scanners in particular, um, into quite a lot of depth. Uh, but it has a really good uh, section on a more uh, 
a more in-depth coverage of, say, uh, signal processing in the, Fourier, in the Fourier transform. So, uh, it's a it's a good way to go. Let's see. Um, so yeah, between these three books, I'm gonna try to do everything um, and other random notes I can pull from, and also my own material uh, that I'll introduce in this class. And uh, and yeah, I think uh, that'll be a lot of fun. I. Uh, so uh, this book is, is kind of interesting. Uh, it is written in 1984, and this is just after um, the, uh, well, just after I was born. Um, oh, sorry, it was the first edition was 1983. It was a few months before I was born. In any case, um, and so, but this also comes uh, just after the, uh, the awarding of the um, Nobel Prize uh, in 1979 to, uh, it was a Nobel Prize for Medicine and Physiology, and it was awarded to Alan McLeod and Cormac, uh, oh, Alan McCord, sorry, Alan McLeod, Cormac, and uh, Godfrey Newbold uh, Hounsfield, and, uh, and so they uh, were development they were primarily responsible for the development of CT scanners in the 1960s and 70s. Uh, and they sort of rediscovered uh, what we're gonna be discussing as like the radon transform and uh, image reconstruction uh, inverse problems uh, as radon referred to them. Uh, and radon did his work in 1915. But uh, most of them really, most of these guys really had no clue about radon's work. Uh, and, so, um, and so they rediscovered that yet again. Yeah. And so uh, that is, and so if you, and so if you learn tomography well enough, uh, then, you know, you could potentially get a Nobel Prize. Uh, there was another Nobel Prize uh, that went out for MRIs uh, later, I think in 1990s. Um, I'll put uh, the information for that here. And uh, yeah, it's, a, um, it's an exciting field. And um, yeah, and there's still a lot of active work into it. Uh, even though this book was written in 1984, that was, uh, um, you know, so some of the things in here are a little bit dated. Uh, it is still uh, rather important. It, it discusses the radon transform, uh, Fourier transforms, and all that. And all, all of these meth ideas are still singularly important in, in the study. And so it, um, this book is still uh, rather, rather relevant uh, in, in its approach, and especially from a mathematical perspective. Um, so yeah, so I think it'll be a, a rather important idea. So uh, what is tomography, uh, generally speaking, and, and what, how do we use it? Um, so uh, the idea, the idea of tomography uh, is that you're using a whole bunch of uh, what are called slices, and I think uh, tomography comes from uh, a Greek word meaning slice in some fashion or another. So uh, the idea is that you have a whole bunch of different slices of a, uh, of a say, a region or a function or somebody's head um, that you obtain uh, basically uh, where these slices are really just integrals so um, so basically if you think uh, of just say uh, some sort of emitter here and a receiver um, where you're submitting where you're shooting out x-rays at somebody's head uh, or even uh, light uh, right here um, and basically, on the other side, uh, you have some sort of detector. Say, uh, in the old days, I think it was like some sort of phosphorus or something like that. And um, and basically, the uh, the decrease in the amount and the intensity of the X-ray uh, as it goes through a person's head uh, depends on what it passes through. So it could pass through, say, muscle or bone or a brain tissue or um, you know or whatever else. And um, and then on the other side. Uh, you see um, the amount of exposure you get, uh, it directly relates to how much was of the x-rays were absorbed by the medium that it was going through. Um, and so that can be thought of as basically doing an integral. And, uh, and a radon transform is basically an integral through a body of some kind. And so I... And, but I mean, like that's just like say a picture, right? Uh, so I mean, I could say hold my hand up in front of, between me and this light, and uh, and you can see, uh, you know, basically, light's decreasing, intensity's decreasing, and um, and that's that's fine. But I mean, like that's that's not going to get you, uh, you know, the, my entire head, my or anything else like that. And so what you have to do is you you basically take this X-ray and you move it um, around somebody's head, uh, or body or whatever and um and then that basically gets you a whole collection of different integrals from different angles uh so 
what you want to do then is you want to basically take all those different angles and all those different integrals and you want to uh, reconstruct what you went what what was happening say in your head i keep saying head uh my experience with cts and mris um mostly was uh, in the examination of my head i had a lot of headaches and other things back when i was a grad student and postdoc so uh, doctors put me in mris and um and then my my wife does a, a mri work um uh in neuroscience and so uh she popped me in the scanner and I uh, and had me uh, sit there while she scanned my head, while she shocked me with electrodes. Um, but in any case, I uh, so then um, uh, so then the idea is that you want to uh, take this and, and reconstruct what uh, all these different integrals were passing through. And so uh, there's this thing called back projection where you basically try to go from uh, the projection given by the radon transform and to reconstructing the actual uh, image or the, the, the medium that you went through. And, and so um, on a theoretical level, and this is what radon did, um, you basically take the integral along every single path uh, and uh, you combine them all into, uh, you just basically integrate over theta as you uh, go in a circle around them. So you just have a whole bunch of different angles uh, and this is for 2d you can do this for 3d and things like that but basically you take all these lines and you, you take the integral around them uh, and basically you take an average of all the different projections and and then that gives you sort of a, a blurry image uh, of uh, what you expect and um and there's i uh, some uh, and some things that this has going for it is that it's really simple to do um uh, you can just basically just an average um, but at the same time uh, we only have a finite number of snapshots so we can't do sort of a continuous integral to get a proper average we have to do uh, estimations and so um, and so then this brings up the concepts of sampling and um, and, and then uh, and that brings in signal processing for analysis and all these other things I uh, and you can even improve uh, your the image and the image sharpness um, by uh, using sort of filtering methods. Uh, so by taking, say, the Fourier transform, multiplying it by the, uh, uh, the norm of the frequency, and then inverting that back, um, that uh, is uh, called sort of filtered back projection, uh, in a sense. Uh, and we can go into that in more detail later. The, uh, um, and in a sense, I mean, that is also uh, for, uh, from another angle that uh, some of my work intersects with, with this is I, I work a lot in um, fractional order systems and fractional derivatives and so um, and so the this multiplication by the norm of the frequency uh, and then inversion uh, is actually uh, what is called a uh, fractional Laplacian um, so uh, if you multiplied by the norm of W squared and then you take the inverse then that would just be uh, the proper Laplacian or the negative Laplacian and, um, and then by uh, only multiplying by the norm of W, that it actually invokes uh, a sort of derivative. Um, but this also can have sort of uh, sharpening features. So the idea is that um, from a Fourier transform perspective, and if you don't understand what this is, don't worry, we'll go over this in the class. Um, but basically what you do is uh, when you multiply by the norm of the frequency, uh, then you are uh, killing uh, lower frequencies and amplifying higher frequencies and then the idea is that um, after a point all of our higher frequencies are just identically zero uh, using sort of the Sham Shannon's um, sampling theorem and uh, and so then uh, basically you you'll help uh, kill all the sort of blurriness coming from sort of uh, um, low frequency content uh, but don't worry we'll, we'll go over all this uh, later as we go and um, and yeah, uh, and we'll do a very thorough introduction of uh, the Fourier transform, and that'll probably actually even take about a month uh, out of the class uh, because it, it is actually a, a, one of the most important tools out of mathematics and in signal processing. And so we should really take a very solid look at uh, Fourier transforms and Fourier series. So, um, so, so that's that's more or less uh, what we're going to be doing. Um, I don't mean to keep rambling here. I uh, let's see. So, uh, how is the class going to be graded and how is it going to be con conducted is probably uh, one of the big things that you guys are wondering about. Uh, the class is going to be conducted by doing, uh, um, you know, sort of uh, YouTube videos here. Uh, this is how I'm going to post my lectures. Um, has the added benefit of um, allowing other 
uh, people who want to use my lectures to use them, especially in this time where um, people might not be very comfortable with recording and things like that, although day by day people are getting more and more used to it. Um, so it makes it available for other people if they need to use this material. And um, and then I, I can also uh, do things like chaptering in the YouTube video uh, and take advantage of like auto uh, um, captioning and, and all these other nice things that are available because YouTube is just so thorough and I never have to worry about it falling apart because it's Google. Um, whereas you're never sure if, uh, you know, say Canvas can handle a load uh, that it's going to be hit with. Uh, since a lot of people are going to be recording lectures and posting it constantly and there's going to be a lot of processing time and things like that. For instance, Zoom, when people were using Zoom before and doing auto captioning and whatnot, they found that um, like it would take an entire day to actually uh, put it all together because Zoom just wasn't ready to handle load. Um, whereas when I was using teaching my differential equation class and I was using YouTube, I mean, YouTube, it wasn't even a hiccup. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I'll be posting my videos here. Uh, as far as uh, what I'm going to be examining you on, um, I'm not going to have any exams in the class. Uh, the class is just going to be entirely project-based. And, um, and so we're going to have uh, four or five projects uh, throughout the semester, um, mostly in trying to implement these reconstruction methods uh, on real data sets, simulated data sets, etc. Uh, some of the stuff is going to come from the public domain, and, um, and uh, I'll want you to put together like sinograms and things like that. The project should take a, you know, a good week or two uh, to, to put together. Uh, and, um, and yeah, but since we're importing people from all over the university, I can't, uh, you know, in good conscience, uh, ask you to, to prove anything um, like I would my mathematics students. Um, so I, I'll present uh, a very thorough introduction to the, the mathematics um, and give you a solid background in all the mathematics. And if you want, um, I'm happy to discuss anything about it. Um, but. I, I can't re reasonably ask you to prove anything uh, and still um, and still keep this course accessible to a, a broad audience outside of mathematics. So, um, so yeah. any case, um, so yeah, so we're gonna have those uh, four or five projects, and and otherwise, um, you know, I've, you know, grades will come through like. Uh, grades will be posted on Canvas. Um, you'll turn everything in through Canvas. Uh, you're going to use a lot of MATLAB, and um, and so I'll post an introductory uh, lecture I did for my numerical analysis class on MATLAB, which will show you how you can get a hold of it. Uh, as a University of South Florida student, uh, USF actually pays for you to uh, have a license, so uh, you have free access to it. Um, the license is renewed every year, um, and so if you're about to graduate, uh, go and download it uh, before you leave, and then you're you're good for a year. Uh, on that license, and uh, and yeah, all of my work is done in MATLAB. I, obviously, all this stuff can be ported over to Python and C and all these other things. Uh, but I find MATLAB's convenient to work with, and since I my primary collaborators are all in engineering, I you know sort of MATLAB sort of the king of uh, uh, engineering uh, programming and stuff. So um, so yeah, so I, I do things in MATLAB. Um, and, uh, and so it's, I'll have to ask you to turn everything in using MATLAB. So, uh, so yeah, so we'll do everything through MATLAB and, um, and yeah, that, that'll be, uh, good. In any case, I, I, generally speaking, it's going to be really hard for me to, um, hold anything synchronously. I'll try to hold like an office hours every couple weeks or so, uh, for you and my numerical analysis students to come and ask me questions. Um, but I have a household uh, with uh, two toddlers who are two years old, and they're, they both throw random tantrums. And uh, and when I signed up for teaching this class, um, I thought we'd be back to normal and like I'd have a classroom to go to. Um, but as it is, the scheduled time uh, to teach this class is you know the worst time for tantrums and and other things uh, with my children. And so we would just have lectures with screaming children in the background if my wife was watching them. Uh, and um, my wife with her own job uh, is gonna be required to go into office sometimes and so then I'd have to be watching the children while also lecturing but with two and a half year olds can't just leave them to their own devices so that leaves with doing everything asynchronously uh, it fits me well because I like putting up these YouTube videos anyway um, and I and then I'll try to arrange office hours and things like that uh, around their nap times uh, which is sort of the best I can do um, 
this is a, a really hard situation because uh, I have to pre-record a lot of lectures and a lot of things and work around nap times and sleep times and uh, and it gets pretty stressful. Um, I'm basically working from like 5.30 in the morning until midnight um, every single day, either watching children or uh, at recording because I mean like I have to take advantage of every moment of the day. So, um, so yeah. So, uh, so I'll do my best uh, to give as solid lectures as I can um, and give it to you as consistently as I can. Uh, and my general goal is to record as far ahead in time as possible. So uh, for numerical analysis, actually, I have everything recorded uh, that I need up until October, but I'll keep doing that and posting it. So if you're following on YouTube and you're seeing this video randomly, um, yeah, I'll don't worry, I'll go back to posting numerical analysis. My camera actually kind of crapped out at the uh, in the middle of all those lectures and so I had to buy a new one and so you're you're watching it here it does 4k now this is a sl3 uh, the rebel sl3 and um, yeah it's, it's a good amount of money I didn't really want to lose uh, during all this um, but yeah that, that's what happens and I guess um, I guess I'm gonna cut it off here uh, that's enough of me rambling and um, and the next time we'll get into uh, actual content I uh, all right, thanks for watching.